When working on a data team, it's one thing to build the code, it's another to plan and strategize your deployment approach. And over the years, I've worked on a handful of different teams where the strategies have been different, whether it's because of personal preference or the technology that you've chosen. So in this video, I've compiled three of the most common approaches that I've seen, and maybe you've run into as well, to help you understand ways that teams are going about this. And in this example, we're going to be basing it off of a DBT project, which is a data transformation tool. But these approaches and concepts can work regardless of tool selection. So keep that in mind as you go through it. But speaking of DBT, if this is a tool that you're using or trying to learn more about, I do have a free guide that helps people learn some of the basics with some tips and pieces of advice on things to look out for so you can build successful projects. And I'll leave a link to that in the description. Feel free to check it out. But with that said, let's now hop into the video talking about the different deployment approaches. First is two databases. We have our raw data in one database. All of the source system is getting loaded to schemas and we're moving it to one other database where we have both development and production schemas within there. We'd have our dev environments, DBT, MCON, and for every other developer, and then custom schemas for the final models that we want in production. You know, these would be really what would be visible to end users. The other option is a single database. For example, if you're working on BigQuery or you're working on Postgres in particular, you don't really query across databases as much. Maybe in BigQuery you can if you want, but oftentimes you'll want to keep everything in one project for billing purposes. Meanwhile, Postgres, I don't even think you can query across databases, at least not very easily. So you want to keep it into one. And one way that you could do this is like this, is loading your raw data as separate schemas in your same database, but prefixing it with something like raw. And then each of them falls together underneath here. So it's actually in order of spelling a lot of times they'll just order it alphabetically but looks clean and it looks nice that all of the raw data is at the bottom then you have your dbt underscore schemas to indicate development and whatnot and then i would say analytics underscore marts staging or whatever you want to call it i call it analytics so that it's at the top i like this approach because visually it also separates the concepts alphabetically and you kind of move up the ladder to see you know exactly where everything's at and it's just one way to do it in a single database approach. The last one is with three databases. And this was the first example that I ever worked on back in the day. And this was similar to the two database approach where we have the raw data completely separate in one database. We also have an analytics database for the production models, but all the stuff in between. So the development schemas and the QA stuff is in a separate database completely called analytics dev. And I think this is easier to do in a tool like Snowflake where it's separated and it looks more like traditional databases. There's no problem, at least with billing or querying across databases. And it just organizes it so that the only thing that people could potentially see in this database are the production models. And it's a clear separation. How you do this is up to you and the tooling that you use and just how you and your team think about it. But these are the options that I've seen and probably the most common approaches that you'll find. So I hope you found that helpful. Feel free to tweak any of these to fit your needs on your team. And this can of course work for other tools, not just DBT. But again, if you're interested, I'll leave a link to that free starter guide for you down below. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.